Over the past couple of weeks, a whole bunch of leaders at New Hope Church have been meeting with other potential leaders who were nominated by our community to be uh, new members of the leadership team at New Hope. And over the course of those conversations, one in particular, one of the potential leaders asked, what are the challenges New Hope is facing right now? What are you guys talking about? So we talked a little bit about those challenges, and then a few minutes later I said, I think the biggest challenge we face as a community, given what God has given us as a vision, is our willingness and our ability to invest our lives fully into what God has called us to. Our vision of seeing God in all things all the time requires an ask of His followers that is wholehearted and so all-encompassing and all-engrossing and requiring, requiring every fiber of your being and faith. I'm not sure whether anybody can give what is necessary for that vision to come to fullness and fruition. And then after that, when I was driving home, or maybe when we were praying together, <clears throat> I thought, and even more so, even if we wanted it bad enough and dedicated our lives to it enough, unless the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to see God in His world, we don't stand a chance. Because right now, we, me, you, are mostly blind most of the time. We have no idea, in fact, how blind we are, so deluded and deceptive is the power of that illness. We can't even fathom how much we're missing, and we're stuck. How do we fix that? According to Jesus, <clears throat> we need to become what we believe. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 27 to 38, and this is from the Message translation of the Bible. As Jesus left the house, He was followed by two blind men, crying out, Mercy, Son of David, mercy on us. When Jesus got home, I guess at the end of that day, the blind men, still following Him, went in with Him. And Jesus said to them, Do you really believe I can do this? And they said, Why, yes, Master. And he touched their eyes and said, Become what you believe. And it happened. They saw. And then Jesus became very stern and said, Don't tell a soul how this happened. But they were hardly out the door before they started babbling to everyone they met human nature being what it is. Right after that, the blind, as the blind men were leaving, <clears throat> as they're walking out the door, a man who had been struck speechless by an evil spirit was brought to Jesus. As soon as Jesus threw the evil, tormenting spirit out, the man talked away as if he'd been talking all his life, and the people were up on their feet applauding. There's never been anything like this in Israel. And the Pharisees, the hyper-judging, hyper-religious, good in the worst sense of the, of the word religious people of that day, the leaders were left sputtering. Hocus-pocus, they said. It's nothing but hocus-pocus. He's probably made a pact with the devil. And then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and the villages. He taught in their meeting places, reported kingdom of God news, and he healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruised and hurt lives, brought sight to many. And when he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they are, all like blind people. With, like sheep with no shepherd. What a huge harvest, he said to his disciples. How few workers. On your knees and pray, pray for harvest hands. How do you learn to see again? Well, according to what we just read, you follow Jesus, you cry out for help from morning till night, maybe, if that's how long you were following Him. 
You believe that he can do it, and then you let him touch your eyes. So the question is, are you following with any kind of fervency, crying out again and again and again? Have you ever asked him for sight, real sight? Do you believe that he can do it, and have you let him touch your eyes? Or ears? God is speaking all around us. Our Christian faith, if you've read the book, is very clear that the whole world is filled with His glory. The Spirit of Christ breathed at that first Pentecost Sunday is still blowing through your life all week long has been blowing through your life and yours, all of ours. And we're meant and made to see amazing things. 